Well, look, we had the most economic expansion we've had since 2005. So, and better earnings growth than we've had since 2005. So at some point it was going to slow down. People forget we're going to continue to grow. It may not be as fast as we're growing. And people just started to panic when the market went down and it just piled on. It was sell anything you could, end the year selling things, and let's start the year fresh. Patrick, I know you believe the economy is slowing, unless it probably is because it's coming off a pretty hot pace. But is it slowing enough that would justify the worst December for the S&P 500 since 1931? Yeah, it, that's exactly what I was going to bring up, is that it, it's the worst uh, market in, in December since the Great Depression. Is it the worst economy? No. You can point to things that are slowing, but I look down the list of, of leading indicators that, you know, my checklist of things that would tell me that a recession is coming, and very few of them are, are signaling anything um, other than, you know, continued growth albeit slower. So, uh, you know, I think the sell-off was both premature in the sense of seeing the, the end of the cycle upon us and, uh, and overdone in that, in that sense that, you know, uh, right now um, mm -hmm. we, we've seen valuations come down from 21 and a half times a PE multiple, trailing multiple for the S&P 500 to 16 times. That's quite a come down and I don't think it's justified by uh, uh, the slowing of the real economy. Yeah, Michael, your, your viewers, I'm sure, or your clients watch CNBC, listen to CNBC, but then they call you to know what to do about <laughs> what they hear from us. Yeah. So give us some practical, real-world advice. What do we do right now? Right now, look, we look for fundamentals. Everyone was so caught up in just everything went up. It was, it was not normal. In or the, everything went down. Everything went up originally, then everything went down. There's no fundamental value to anything that people are doing. So let's refocus on the fundamentals. There are many bank stocks. There are many oil stocks. There are even technology stocks that are trading way below historical normalized PEs. And so if we focus on a stock picker's market, as much as I hate that phrase, active Why do you hate that phrase? Because it becomes cliche and everyone says, okay, well, I can pick this stock. I can pick that stock. No, well, because for, for, for 10 or 15 years, every commercial and every ad in Barron's <laughs> says, don't try to beat the market. Just buy a big ETF and then go play with your children. Yeah. I think we're learning that that's not the most effective strategy, at least right now, because people are, to your point, buying and selling everything yeah. without regard to how any individual company may be doing. And last year, that was okay. That worked last year. Maybe It worked for eight years, to be months. honest with you. Yeah. And then, now, boom, when it's not working, people panic. Let's, let's refocus our fundamental values. Let's refocus on what's most important. Are these companies making money? Are they growing their earnings? And geopolitically... All this will get solved. As, as hard as it is to imagine, we're coming to a, some sort of a reasonable resolution geopolitically, and we're going to refocus back on the markets. Patrick, would you agree with what you just heard? You think it is going to be a stock picker's market, even if you hate that phrase? <laughs> well, I don't hate that phrase at all. And I think that, you know, when, when you've got a market that's going up, a rising tide lifts all boats. But when, uh, when markets hit volatility um, or they go down, that's when... The, the, the quality of, of picking stocks actually reveals itself. I would also add that investors need to be focused long term. They need to be thinking, not just trying to guess when this cycle ends, but actually looking beyond it. You know, one thing that really I'm keying off of is the fact that the equity risk premium, um, the amount of risk adversity that's priced into this market is very high. It's well above average. It's around 5.7%. The long term average is 4.2%. And when you go back in history, uh, when the equity risk premium is above 5%, you get significantly outsized returns over the next five years, 11.8% historically. When it's below 3.4%, you get about 3.2% returns. The reason why is at some point, all that risk adversity that's been mm -hmm. packed into the market gets unpacked, whether a recession happens in the meantime or not. So, it doesn't tell you, looking at that doesn't tell you where stocks are going to be a year from now. But if you're looking beyond where stocks are going to be a year from now, it's a very important number. Michael, what do you think? Do you think the last word, do you, do you believe that, that stocks one year from now will be higher than they are right now? Yeah. Aside Despite from, all the worry out there, aside, the wall of worry <laughs> about the wall. Aside from historical norms of in the third year of a presidential election, the S&P 500 is up on an average of 16.9%. Let's leave that aside. Fundamentally, I do believe they'll be higher. 
our economy is still growing. It may not grow as fast as it did last year. Yeah. Earnings are still growing. Companies are still producing. And I think there's no question it will be higher by the end of the year. Fair point. We used to be really excited to hear about 3% growth. Now yeah. somehow it's bad. Bad, yeah. Because it's the same number going up or down. Even Either way. zero growth, we would do well this year. 